Pleasing in your sight, oh God, I ask that you will open hearts and minds uh, for clarity of speech, God, and um, I pray, God, for anybody who uh, is going through whatever the issues might be, Lord, you know, and so, Lord, I pray uh, right now, God, that you will heal and that you will come for those only you can, uh, God, and even for our own sister Addison, Lord, I pray uh, your healing touch, God, in her life, Lord, if it be your will, and so, God, um, again, Lord, I pray uh, for everybody everywhere, God, that you already know. Uh, what each of us need, you know our desires, you know our wants, you know our aches and our pains, uh, you know what saddens us, you know what makes us happy, and so God, I ask that you would uh, make us the women of God that you called us to be, God, so that we may always uh, exemplify you and glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, ladies, I'm getting ready to mute the call. We can go ahead and get started, and if you want to make a comment, If you want to make a comment, press star six to to comment. Thank you. All participants are muted and they will be unmuted. Okay. <coughs> Good morning. 
it again, ladies. Good morning. Good to have y'all with us this morning. Everybody should have a lesson, and so our lesson for today is He is Able. Jude 20 through 25. And when I, uh, you know, I tossed and turned, like, okay, where do I go? What do I do? And I kept going to Jude. I was like, no, are you sure? We, I mean, that's something different for us. We don't normally, you know, it's kind of not a lesson that we hear a lot or often. I'm like, okay, here we go. So he say that, so that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So your outline, uh, as you see, uh, we have three points with some breakdown in between. And, uh, okay, so we're going to read the verses first. I'm sorry, we're going to read verses. And actually, we're going to read actually three and four and then go over to 20 through 25. And it says, Beloved, while I was very vigilant to write to you concern, concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denied the only Lord and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And 20 says, But you, beloved, being yourselves, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Mm -hmm. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 So, just a little background before we dig in. Um, the author, basically, of this epistle was the brother of James was made in the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jude wrote this letter to warn his readers that the apostates, which basically were false teachers, those who come in and are uh, teaching false doctrine, uh, were already on the scene. And so if you look at uh, 2, Peter 2, uh, 2 Peter 2 and 3, you'll see where Peter prophesied that they would come, and basically this prophecy had already been fulfilled. So Jude now is writing to those same believers who had received uh, Paul, Peter's letters, intending to stir them up and remind them to take Peter's warnings to heart. There are a number of parallels between Jude and 2 Peter, so in your time when you can really go back and study and look at it, go back and just compare. You're going to see a lot of similarities, like I said, with this book, Jude and 2 Peter, uh, namely chapters uh, 2 and 3. So Jude is writing to exhort or to urge them, basically almost like a general giving an order um, uh, I'm sorry, writing them like he's giving them an order. So he's, he started off basically first, he wanted to write this quiet devotional letter about salvation, but the spirit led him to put down his heart and sound the trumpet. Mm -hmm. All right. So number, number one tells us, contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints, verses three and four. And so I just read, uh, I just read that. So that's the first, that's kind of what we're going to start with. So we've already noted, like I said, that Jude set out to write this letter about the common salvation. And so the name Jude mean, or Judah means praise. And he was anxious to praise God and rejoice in the salvation that God gives in Jesus Christ. But the Spirit of God changed his mind and led him to write about the battle against the forces of evil in the world. Now, keep in mind, we, are, we know this, that, that we as, a, as Christians, and in our life, our Christian life is a battleground. Mm. It is yes. nowhere close to being a playground. Mm. If we want to do what God has called us to do and stay on the upright, on the right road, it is a battleground and we are always in a fight. Yes. So mm. you're going to see in verse 3, well, verse 4, where Jude is already identifying the enemy. Basically, he says, for, for certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men 
who turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and deny our only Lord God and, and Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So basically, Jude is saying they're ungodly, they're deceitful, and they were enemies of God's grace. All right? They denied God's truth. Now, it's not like they didn't know. They knew it, but they made a, a decision mm -hmm. that they were no longer going to follow God because they willfully turned away from the truth. That's why they were apostate, referred to as apostates, false teachers. Okay? They denied his, him, his son. They mocked the promise of Christ's coming uh, and the judgment that he would bring against the ungodly. So when we look at letter A, it says exert it, intense effort in building up one another, and that's found in verse 20. And then B says earnestly pray in the sphere of the Holy Spirit, uh, again, verse 20. So like I said, when we think about the Christian life, we are a, uh, it's a battleground. It is not, we, you know, we're not here to play. If we are going to live like God has called us to and to do what God calls us, that means we need to always be on our P's and Q's, and always uh, ready to fight. Amen. So, you know, you've heard the saying that it says, a house that's left to itself will fall apart. Mm -hmm. So if we don't focus on what we're doing and what God has called us to, it's not, it's only, it just doesn't, just doesn't happen. We've got to work to what God has called us to work. So yeah. basically these false teachers, these apostates, they were in the business of tearing down. But as Christians, each of us, because there's false teachers here today, uh -huh. so as Christians, we must be involved in building up. But the only way we can build up somebody else is we gotta first build our own selves up, okay? okay. The foundation for our Christian life is our holy faith. So Jude 20 says, but you beloved, building yourselves up on your most high holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, all right? so. Like I said, the foundation of our Christian life is our most holy faith, which is the same faith that was delivered to the, Jew, to the saints in verse 3. That's why I said it's not like they didn't know. They already knew the truth, but they made a willful decision to turn away from the truth. All right. And only they turn away from the truth, they are now uh, going in preaching a false doctrine to other people. Uh, to, yeah, to other people, because now they're saying uh, God is not who he is. Uh, they are, like I said, they're deceitful men. They don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So now they are spreading this word. But the only way we can build up our lives, build up others, is that we must know the word. The only way you can live by the word, you got to read it, you got to study it, you got to know it. It doesn't just come. Uh, the mm -hmm. word of God is crucial to our spiritual life. So me and my people that you know, I've yet to meet anybody who has a, um, who is a fruitful Christian, excuse me, who ignores his or her Bible. You think about it. You talk to people, and it doesn't take long. Once you start talking to them, you know whether they study the word, or they're trying to live by the word. It doesn't take long into the conversation. And most of those people are usually not strong, fruitful Christians. Because again, the only way we can do that is we gotta read it, we gotta study it, we gotta know it. Mm -hmm. We gotta spend some time uh, in, a, in, in the Word, spend some devotional time in the Word, we, we must seek the mind of God. Mm -hmm. We must also study the Word regularly so, again, we can know what it teaches. You don't know what the Word says if you never mm -hmm. study it, you mm -hmm. never read it. Mm -hmm. So, again, it says, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. So, I was reading when I was studying, I saw, I saw it said that uh, it said that there's a gifted Chinese preacher named Watchman Nee, who used to read through the New Testament once a month. Think about this, the New Testament, y'all, once a month, okay? It is said it's parent when you read his books, for you are struck with the wonderful insights into God's word. word. The members of the Chinese church used to have a saying, no Bible, no breakfast. Mm -hmm. Think about it, y'all. If we follow that motto in America, mm -hmm. I wonder how many Christians will go hungry. No Bible, no word. I mean, no Bible, no breakfast. If we took that same motto. Okay. Just think about that. But anyway, so now he tells us we must earnestly pray in the sphere of the, of the Holy Spirit. So when we look at the second clause of verse 20, it says praying in the Holy Spirit. Remember, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, mm -hmm. praying in the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. But think about it. When, uh, the power for building the Christian life comes from prayer. We pray in the Holy Spirit. But what exactly does that mean? Because the Word of God and prayer goes together. That's, you know, you can't, you can't do one without the other. You mm -hmm. need to pray, right. you, need the, you need the Word of God. If all we do is read and study the Bible, 
then we're going to have a great deal of light, but not much power. Mm -hmm. But if we concentrate on prayer and ignore the Bible, we may be guilty of zeal and being excited, but we don't have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. So they go together. Mm -hmm. You got to read the word of God as well as pray. You got to pray and spend. Like I said, we can't give God back. I think a few times back I was teaching and I said, when we pray, God wants us to give him back his, his word. word. But we can't give it back to him if we don't know it. That's right. We gotta spend a little time in the word of God. Mm -hmm. So again, we read the word of God so that we can grow in faith. Uh, but what does it mean to pray in the spirit? Uh, you notice the contrast in 19 says, there are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. But then when you get to 20, he says, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So on one, you've got sensual persons not having the spirit, and then we who are Christians are praying in the spirit. Mm -hmm. this, notice the contrast there, okay? It, when, we, when it says pray in the Holy Spirit, it means to pray according to the leading of the spirit. Prayer is not getting man's will done here on earth, but it's getting God's will done on earth. But we must pray according to the spirit. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we might pray in solitude. Like I said, we go into our secret closets and we pray, but we never pray alone. The Spirit of God joins us as we pray. Because Romans 8, 26 through 28 tells us, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for mm -hmm. as we ought. Yeah. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know... That all things work together yeah. for good to those who love God, to yeah. those who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. All right? So now, we may pray alone, but we're never alone. Because we don't know what to pray for. Mm -hmm. We don't know. Mm -hmm. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us. Because he helps us. He understands our groaning. He can now make intercession for us. Alone. He's going to give us wisdom and knowledge from the word of God. He's going to also help us to be able to approach God. Because we don't know how to pray. We don't know what to say. But we've got the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in us who helps us mm -hmm. to pray, who helps us with the word. Mm -hmm. that, I think I said that last Sunday, a few Sundays back. You know, I think sometimes we get worked up into having the right subject and the verb and mm -hmm. making sure I'm saying it right. That's not what God called. He said, I didn't want you to talk to me. Mm -hmm. yes. And then we have the Holy Spirit who's yes. going to come yes. in between and I'll make it right because he's going yeah. to make intercession for us yeah. and help us so that we know what to say to the Father. Mm -hmm. By the time they leave our lips to him, He's, he understands it. Yeah. It may not sound right to us, yes. and we may be yes. Jesus But he got it because he knows our heart. He yes. knows what right. we he knows what right. we have right. of. He knows what we are praying for. Right. Um, okay, so we worship God in the spirit, uh, and the spirit, like I say, motivates us to pray. Uh, for he is for he is the spirit of grace and supplication. So when the believers yielded to the spirit, then the spirit will assist him, like I said, in his prayer life. And God will answer prayer. Oh, yes, I said, I learned that last Sunday. When we yes, go praying to the Father, we got to go praying and believing it already done. Mm -hmm. Why are you praying if you don't believe he's, gonna, he's going yeah. to do it? All so right. God All says, right. you pray according to my will, mm -hmm. he will answer our mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay, so now, verse 21. <laughs> so, verse 21 tells us, uh, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, Unto eternal life. Mm -hmm. And your outline says, See, exercise the love of God at all times, and eagerly anticipate the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, basically the building up process of the Christian life involves the word of God, the spirit of God, and prayer. Word of God, spirit of God, prayer. But these things, as precious as they are, can sometimes become routine if we're not careful. But Jude now adds another uh, factor in 21. He says abiding in God's love. Okay? Keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto him. So basically keep, uh, keep yourselves in the love of God means to abide. Mm -hmm. And when right. we talk about right. abiding, that means staying, right. that means lingering, mm -hmm. that means spending some yeah. time. It yeah. doesn't just, you know, you just don't have the chance just kind of go through. No, you, you're going to yeah. abide. Yeah. You got to stay there. You got to spend yeah. a little time. So basically, he's now at the other fact. So notice he didn't say, keep yourselves saved. Mm -hmm. Because he'd already assured them back in verse 3 when we first mm -hmm. started that they were already, he'd already told them that at the beginning of the chapter, I'm sorry, the beginning of chapter uh, 1, 
He already told them that they had been preserved in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So he didn't tell them, keep yourself saved, because that was already done. All right? Basically, what he's saying is keep yourselves in the love of God, meaning stay there. And the reason he told them is because he knew it was going to take some work. It yeah. wasn't going to just happen. You got to stay there. You got to stay there. You got to be diligent about it mm -hmm. so that you can do what God has called you to do. Mm -hmm. um, in John 15 and 9, there's a similar statement that says, continue ye in my love, meaning abide. If he's yeah. telling us to continue, God is telling us you got to abide in my love. You got to continue doing it again. It doesn't yeah. just happen. Uh, to love God yes. means more than to, do, to enjoy a special kind of feeling. Of course, we grow in grace, but we do experience a deeper fellowship with the Father, and we do have times when he seems very near. Mm. But the Bible compares this love to a love of a husband and wife. Any happily married couple can tell you that over the years, their love has deepened, okay? But it didn't just happen. Mm, right. And although these ecstatic feelings are great and make a successful marriage, there's something else that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. So it is in our spiritual life with Christ Jesus. We can't just say we love God. We've got to grow in love, yeah. but the only way we can do that is we've got to keep his commandments yeah. so that we can abide in abide. his love. That's All right? That's right. So we grow, so we grow in, grow in uh, our love for God grows. We, are, we need to listen to his word and delight in doing what pleases him. Mm -hmm. And then by doing that, if we're going to exercise his love at all times, then we can eagerly anticipate the mercy, letter D, of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when you get to 21B, he says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ into eternal life. So when you think about you, or think about you eagerly anticipating something. You don't just like, okay, I guess it's so, you know, okay, when are there? No, you're excited about it. So it tells us that when I am looking for the mercy, I am excited about what I know God is going to do because I'm building my yes, life, my Christian yes. life, on the foundation of faith and the, motivation, and the motivation of love. But we also need hope yes. because we are looking, we are eagerly looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. So as, as believers, we always got to be looking up. We always got to be looking up to heaven. We always got to be eager about oh, what yeah. God is going yeah. to do. Yes. Titus 2, 2 and 13 says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, 2 Peter 3 says, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the coming of the day of God. Nothing like a day to go about it. Okay, we are looking, like I said, with anticipation. Mm -hmm. We are eagerly looking. So when you look at uh, looking, like I said, you are earnestly expecting something. It describes an attitude of life yeah. that is motivated by the promise of our Lord's return. So for the apostates, because they now are false teachers, only thing they can look for for them is judgment. That's it. <laughs> but for us, for God's people, we're looking for his mercy, mm -hmm. as well as his church being delivered from this evil world. Yes. So, um, so what do we have? Faith, hope, and love that enables us to grow in our spiritual walk. We're able to build on a solid foundation with materials that will not decay, all right? Um, Matthew 7 tells us, not everyone that, say, that says, Lord, Lord, share, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So again, we've got to have faith, we got to have hope, and we must love. have love. Romans 2, commit to confronting those who cause chaos in the faith, mm -hmm. verses 22 and 23. And it reads, and, and on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. All right. So basically, um, when, we are com when we commit to confronting those that cause chaos in the faith, what should the attitude of the growing Christian be toward those who are influenced by these false teachers, these apostates, these talking heads that we have in our present age? What should be our attitude? Uh, Jude is instructing his readers to exercise discernment mm -hmm. and to act on the basis of that dis discernment. So he describes three different kinds of people who needed spiritual help. Now, when, he, when you look at it in the New American Standard Bible, he makes it, cl makes it clear. And I'm just going to read it for you. New America Standard Bible in verse 22 says, and have mercy on some who are doubting. And 23 says, save others, snatching them out of the fire, 
and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. So, so basically what Jude is saying, he's telling us what we should be doing to help those who now are being uh, pulled away by these false teachers, all right? We ought to show compassion and grace and compassion on them individually. We gotta have mercy on those who die. So there are people who are wavering. They're probably those uh, back in Peter who, when he wrote about the unstable soul. So they've heard the word, um, they're converted, but they're not grounded in the truth. So what he's telling us is what you need to do is, is appeal to them, go to them with mercy, show mercy on them, show grace on them, show compassion on them, because they're not where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And you've got the false teachers now in one ear telling them one thing, yeah. they don't know what to believe. They've been converted, but they still kind of shaky and they don't know. So you've yeah. got to go to them now with grace and compassion to help them so that they are not drawn completely away by these mm -hmm. false teachers. Our responsibility, like I said, is to have mercy on them, show compassion, mm -hmm. by leading them away from the influences like the apostate. Um, now for, for, and we know, all of us have some people like that. We've got people in our lives, we know they bathe in Christ, they do, and they think they know, but, but they don't. Mm -hmm. And so we're there to help them. And usually people like that, that's a hard task, mm -hmm. because they're excited, and everything they hear, they believe. Yeah. And you sitting there like, that, yeah. that's not the whole truth. But you still gotta be patient with them. You gotta show some mercy mm -hmm. with them. You gotta gently come alongside them and help them, those that are wavering. Mm -hmm. um, they think, like I said, they think they know right from wrong. You gotta be careful that you just don't say no to them, because they like children. Yeah. You think about it, you tell children no and they rebel. They're gonna do the opposite of what you say. <laughs> um, but you gotta come alongside them. You yes. gotta have mercy on them. Uh, basically, one of the best ways to draw them away from false teaching and to magnify all that they know in Christ, that they've experienced in Christ, is to take them back to their excitement, what they knew of Christ when they first started. Mm. So, Tell them about their salvation. What was so wonderful to know that I was on the street one day, yeah. and now today, just because of my belief in by faith, yeah. that God now chose to save me. Talk to them from that standpoint. They have to know that it's nothing that you did. Mm. Just because of how mm. gracious God is, He chose to love me. Talk to them from the standpoint that God has forgiven me of all of my sins, like I've never even sinned before. Mm. Uh, when you talk to them from that standpoint, not so much as to don't do this and don't do that, but who God is. Yeah. Who God is in their, in their life. Mm -hmm. The word should make them so exciting that they're going to lose interest in what the false teachers are saying. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, we've got to go to them, though, and have some, we've have some patience because it's a hard task. It's going to take us a little bit mm -hmm. to get there because usually it doesn't happen just overnight. All right. So, uh, like I said, you and, with, and B tells you, Show grace and compassion while being aggressive when necessary. Yes. So for the so for some people, you gotta snatch them out the fire. Mm. That means they're not standing on the sidelines, just kind of uh. looking and seeing and let me yeah. see what they they yeah. like all the way deep down in it. Yeah. They they are not hearing, they are not uh they're not hearing anything you're saying, but everything the false teachers oh, are yeah. saying to them, they're in it. Everything about the word of God is mm. wrong. They they have denounced everything about God. And so we've got to intervene in them because they already trapped in the sin. Yeah. And so when you've got somebody who think they right, Come and on. think they know the word, mm. and you know everything they sin does not yes. match what the word of God said, they are deep down in, trapped in the sin. Mm. And, and so the word is telling us, Jesus says, those are people you've got to go to with some compassion. You've got to be a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. You still got to have compassion. You still got to show God's love. Mm -hmm. But you've got to basically snatch them out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. keep them out a uh, lot. When he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, they literally went in the house and pulled him out. He didn't just walk out. Mm -hmm. They pulled him. The only difference with him and his wife is he didn't look back. Mm -hmm. So you got to think about it. They went and snatched them. They had to save them because if they stayed there, they would have been destroyed. My God. Just like, okay, so... So we gotta remember that, that it doesn't come easy. We gotta go grab them. We gotta snatch them out of the fire. It's gonna take some time. But God says, you know what, Jude says, but you gotta do it. That's what he's called you right, to right. do because that's our defense against the false teacher. Yes. All right, so um, Galatians 6 reminds us, brothers and sisters, if someone is trapped in any wrongdoing, in a sin, you who live by by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. Mm, yeah. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. 
So we gotta be careful. Like I said, this is more than just indulging. They are on the way trapped in. It's an addiction, and the power of sin is great. But the words, but he said, he says, you plural, not just one of you, not just you, Judy, not just you, Julia, not just you, Lena. He says, not just one of you, but all of you plural. He said, you've got to go and grab them. You've got to go and Man. save them. Oh, he says, because you are the ones who are, walk, who are walking in the right. spirit. Okay. Uh, like I said, they are not just doubting. They're not just sitting on, on the sidelines looking. They are already trapped. And they need God to save them yes. so that they can be set free. Not an easy task. It's a tough task. But it is God's love that we are to do. Right. Okay. Mm. And then he says, have mercy on others, but with, but with fear. That's the last part of verse 23. Mm -hmm. Not, but wait when he says, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Okay. So the, these people, they were to separate themselves from, the, we are to separate themselves, and they were, his Jew, Jews readers, were to separate themselves from those who were promoting this evil lifestyle. But, but to do, do it with mercy combined with godly fear. So basically what, what he's telling us, don't ever give up on people because there's hope for people who've gone astray. It may not happen at the time that we think yeah, it should happen, yeah, but yeah. God said, because I ain't just back on us and say, okay, how long is it going to take her to get it? Yeah. And did it take, why does it take her this time? We don't know what God is yeah, doing in the yeah, We don't know who right. he's going to send. Right. And you might feel like I've been talking for 10 years, right. but they may hear one something from somebody you least expect. God says, don't give up. Yeah. Jude says, you know what, there's always hope of people who have Thank gone astray. And so we've got to go and do what he's called us to do, but be careful not to get trapped in the same situation. Right. Yeah. All right. He says, so when the fra phrase with fear means with caution, and trying to help those who err, we must be careful, like I said, not to get trapped ourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Paul dealt with this when he wrote to the, Cor to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 6. He said, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, mm -hmm. for with fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion light with darkness. So basically he says, that is, uh, don't, basically what he said is don't partner with them. Mm -hmm. Don't have kononia, which is translated mm -hmm. fellowship. Mm -hmm. Don't fellowship with them because once you begin to, you in that same little boat, mm -hmm. fellowship with them, when you look up, you're going to be trapped in the same thing. Mm -hmm. So there's no fellowship. There's no partnership between righteousness and lawlessness. They don't go together. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no uh, uh, fellowship with darkness and light. They don't go together. They cannot be mixed. Light is supposed to cancel out the darkness, but if you are not careful, yeah. when you look up, the darkness yeah. will light out all of the light. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to yeah. be careful that when you go and you're doing things, that you are doing it based on what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. yeah. we got to love people. That's what God has called us to, but yes. we must hate sin. Yes. If God hates it, we must yeah. hate it. Mm -hmm. If God loves it, then we love it. So right. as believers, yes, Judas said, you're going to love, love the person, but you got to hate the sin. Yeah. And you can't make it. There's no in-between. No. you got to let it be known. Mm -hmm. I love you, but I hate the sin mm -hmm. because that's what God has said. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, so uh, uh, and so basically we, we need to, just as, as believers, this is a nugget for us, that we need you know, some people to go with us, that we go together uh, in prayer, talking to people because it's not easy. It's not easy to deal with. And like I said, it doesn't... Um, it's not going to come overnight trying to pull somebody out of the, off the sideline. Yeah, or yeah. like I said, even if they deep down in it. It's much easier for new Christians to keep them away from false teachers than to snatch them out of the fire. Mm. One thing when they, like I said, they kind of teetering, but when they in it, mm. like I said, it can't be done. It's mm. much harder though. Yeah. Right. So then we get to, um, questions are coming. Can y'all hear me on the line? If you have a question or comment, you can hit star six. Are there any questions or comments on the line? Okay, we'll continue. So Roman number three says, celebrate and glorify God who is the sustainer of our faith. 
So juice kind of doc doxology encourages us today to, like I said, celebrate and glorify God, who is a sustainer of our, of our faith. Mm -hmm. Verse 24 reads, now to him who is able mm -hmm. to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. A tells you he is able to keep you and he is able to present you faultless. Now, most of us are familiar with this well-known benediction. Mm -hmm. It carries a wealth mm -hmm. of spiritual truth for the believer mm -hmm. to receive. If we want to keep our feet on the ground spiritually, we got to walk straight and not stumble. Yes. Then we must yield ourselves fully to the Savior. He alone is able to guard us. He said he, he can keep you 24-8. Hey, now to him who is able to keep you. Not he might be, not on a good day. Not No, he is able to keep you mm. from stumbling. Yes. But we got to right. believe it. It's one thing to say, but you got to believe that. Yeah, we, right. we, if we want to keep our feet from stumbling, uh, like I said, we've got to walk straight, yeah. not stumble, yield ourselves fully to him. He alone, he doesn't need a you plural, he alone yeah. is able to guard us and keep us. We must keep ourselves in the love of God. If we don't do that, okay, 21, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Yeah. Now to him who is able to keep yeah. you from stumbling. <laughs> You, yes, Lord. It, it doesn't yes, say maybe Lord. he can. It doesn't say, you know, okay, I'm going to see how she does it. No, it says now for him who is able. That's how he's closing yeah. out. Yeah. He wants us to be encouraged to know, you know yes. what, if you do your part, I'm telling you That's I'm right. able to keep from yeah. stumbling. That's but right. you got to stay in the love with me. Yeah. You got to do what I'm telling you. You got to read the word. You got to yeah. study the word. You got to yeah. walk in the word. You got to rest in the word. You got to yeah. breathe the word. You got to yes. talk the word. Yes. He says, but I can keep you from stumbling. You're right. So Jude now is writing about this possibility of the believer sinning and falling. I'm sorry, he was not writing about the uh, possibility of believers sinning and falling from God's family. He made it clear, like I said, in Jude 1, that true believers <coughs> were preserved and cannot be lost. Well, we already know. One saved, always saved. He cannot yes. be snatched out of God's hand. Yes. Right. Basically, he's writing these believers about the daily walk with the Lord and the danger of going astray and stumbling. But again, he promises us that if you do disobey God and you confess, his sin, confess your sins and receive God's forgiveness, okay? But if you will receive his forgiveness. But if you persist in disobedience, he's going to chasten us in love. Yeah. So you got two choices. You sin, you confess, he forgives us. You keep sinning, you keep, you keep living in disobedience, and he is going to chasten us yeah. in love. That's Hebrews 12. But he will never permit one of his own to be lost. One saved, always saved. Mm. <laughs> okay, so yes. um, basically the grand purpose that God is that God, the purpose of salvation, I'm sorry, is not simply to res rescue sinners from hell. As wonderful as that is, the grand purpose is that God may be glorified to show himself off mm. for all eternity. That's, that's what it is. That's the real purpose mm. so that God can glorify him, himself. Yeah. He need us. Yeah. We need yeah. God. He doesn't need, need us. Him. But the purpose of this is so that he can glorify himself. Yeah. But he wants us to keep celebrating because when he gets to 25, he says, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me back up. So when he talks about to glorify himself, that's the end of 24, uh, the end of verse 24. Mm. So before the, pre he says, because he wants to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. All right? That's why I said he's talking about glorifying himself because he wants to be excited yeah. again yeah. about presenting us before the Father. Wow. And he's excited about it. Just like we're looking for uh -huh. his mercy uh -huh. and we're excited about his mercy uh -huh. and what's going to come, so he's is excited. God. He yeah. wants to be able to show yeah. us yeah. about his yeah. daddy. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. He says, to God our Father, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty. So, in the dominion and power, both now and forever. So he wants us to keep on yeah. celebrating. Yeah. Um, it is not enough for us to say Jesus Christ is, is a savior or the savior. Mm -hmm. We must say that he's our savior. Yeah. Right. I mean, when does it become personal to you? When do you say he is my Lord and savior? Yeah. He is not mm. a savior. Oh, yeah, they talk about he's the savior. No, he's my savior. Yeah. Yeah. He's our savior. Yeah. So that's what God wants us to do. It's, it's not only that he's our savior, but in 25, he says, to God our Savior, who alone is wise. wise. He is the only wise God, not a wise God, the, mm. and that's a definite article. Okay, the only yes. wise God. Yeah. He can give you wisdom. You need to live your life to glory God. Mm. 
Okay, these false teachers, they were boasting about their special knowledge, but they lacked spiritual wisdom. They did not have that. God gives us the wisdom who, those of us who ask me, all you can do is ask me. Right. Ask me for it. Because God wants us to talk. I think for the past two Sundays, I've been talking about praying, just going to God yeah, in prayer. Yeah. And all it is is talking to talking God. And that's what he wants us to do. Mm -hmm. So if we seek the wisdom of God in his word, he says they would not stumble. That was a, the, us too will not stumble into the false teachers, but we will walk to please God. Mm -hmm. So the question is, why should we walk in obedience to God's will? Okay, <laughs> tells you in the word. So that, so that Christ might receive glory. That's why. Mm -hmm. Glory is the sum total of all that God is and all that God does. Everything about him is glorious, mm -hmm. everything. The glory of men fades away, but the glory of God, no. it goes on eternally. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he wants to glorify himself. Be glory and majesty. When we look at majesty, it means greatness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, magnificence. Our God is great. Yes, he no, is. No ifs, ands, yes, and buts about it. And each of us sitting here yes, already he know that. Amen. When we praise God, we praise the most oh, magnificent yes. person yes. in the universe. Yes. Yes. He is who he is. He's not simply king. Mm. King of kings. Yeah. He's not simply <laughs> Lord. He's Come on Lord. Now. Come on who now. else is that you want to praise besides God? Because yeah. we want God to be able to glorify yeah. himself. He says, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. We look and at dominion. Power. It has to do with God's sovereignty. Mm -hmm. uh, he rules over all things. That word means strength in the Greek. Yeah. But it carries an idea of completeness over everything. Yeah. Okay? Dominion and power. Power being authority, which is the he. Who else but God has the right to use power? Mm. Who else but God has the right <laughs> to have authority? So if we want to be what God has called us to be, God says, you know what? You've already been saved. And Judas reminded his readers as he reminds us, mm -hmm. you've already been saved. You know that you have. But there are false teachers who are going to be saying things that are contrary to the will of God. He said, mm -hmm. but you've got a responsibility because you might grab it, but there's somebody else yeah. over here who may not yeah. have it. You've got some yeah. other brothers and sisters who are tinkering around the edge, yeah. and they are getting yeah. too close to the fire, and you've been given a commandment to my, do, my, but yeah. you ought to go yeah. and grab them. Out. Talk to them gently with grace, with mercy. You want to pull them out. You want to explain to them mm. about the salvation of Jesus Christ mm. and how much joy there was when they yes, gave their yes, life to yes, Christ. Yes. But, but then those who are deep down in the fire, huh. they will have to snatch them out. They may come out hollering, sticking, and screaming. Yeah. But God says you got to snatch them out with love that is. Yes. But the reason we do that is because at the end of the day, we want God, who he says, now to him, yeah. who is able yeah. to keep you from stumbling, mm -hmm. to present you faultless, before the presence of his glory my with exceeding God, joy God. to God our yeah, Savior, yeah. who alone is wise, right. be glory and majesty, mm -hmm. dominion and power, both now and forever. Mm -hmm. Again, like I said, we want them, I mean, you think about this, this book or this letter that Jude was writing, how he was going to start one way, which started a, um, you know, just kind of softly and be, and you know, wanting to do a praise, basically, but then realize because of the false teachers, he now has to switch and say, you know, I need to give y'all a warning. But then at the end, he says, wait a minute, what a wonderful way to end the benediction to let you know who God is because, yes. because he's able, because yes. he can keep you, yes. and because he can present yes. you, he's yes. got glory. Yes. He yes. is majesty, yes. dominion, yes. and power, both yes. now, now and after a while, yeah. now and forever. Yeah. So how Eternity. Does tell you what better yes. way to yes. end that? So knowing that he had a purpose, like I said, I he is now reminding his readers of the greatness of God. Mm. If they would only catch on to, don't forget, mm. think back to the grand that brought you here to begin with, and yeah. just think about that. My if God. they would grab hold to My it, God. they would never be led astray by false teachers. That's a word for us today, mm. too. If yeah. we would remember our first love, yes. we would remember how it was when we first came yeah. to Christ, yes. we were so excited. Yes. We won't be led astray yes. by the false uh, teachers and the false doctrine that is out there, that comes before us. We will be able to discern right. what is truth and right. what is not true. Right. Right. You don't have to stumble. Mm. Remember the word. Build your Christian life in faith and hope and love and exercise spiritual discernment. Yes. Commit yourself to Christ. Mm. Then he will keep you from stumbling. But you got to be alert. Nice you got to stay awake because the enemy is subtle. We said all the time. Right. Right. The, Satan is, look, he, don't need, he don't even need, he don't need the crack that he can see. He doesn't need much at all because he's coming in, he is seeking. I'm telling y'all, you got to be on alert. But know 
that the only wise God, your Savior, he's going to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. But we don't know what he can do because we don't read his word. That's right. We got to read his word because we right. know that he is able. Yeah. Yes. I can tell you that all day long, yeah. but you can do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to spend a little time with him. And he will present us joyfully. That's what he wants to do. He wants to present us joyfully mm. in glory. Mm. And one more yes. time. Now to him now who is able yes. to keep you from stumbling yes. and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory God, with exceeding God. joy. Yes. To God our Savior, yes. who alone is wise, be glory yes. and majesty, dominion yes. and power, both now and forever. Yes. Amen. Amen. Questions or comments? I just had a comment um, at the first part where you talked about exceedingly earnestly praying in the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, I just find myself that sometimes I don't utter no words out of my mouth. I kneel down and I pray, but I don't utter nothing out of my mouth, and it's just my Thoughts. spirit Thoughts. is mm -hmm. just praying. And a lot of times it's like that prayer is a whole lot better mm -hmm. or feel much better mm -hmm. than me actually saying words. Mm -hmm. It's like my spirit is praying for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I just thought about that on uh, 1 and B, mm -hmm. you know, earnestly mm -hmm. praying in the spirit mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Right. I let my inner man right. talk and I don't even move my mouth. I just quietly listen mm -hmm. and send it up to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. When, sometimes when you're talking, you know, you get the stumbling and stuttering yeah. and stuff like that. But like you say, God knows what you're trying to say. Yes, right. Even right. though you don't say it in the right way. Right. Right. Jesus is there interceding for us. Right. Yeah. Telling God, no, she meant, actually meant. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's good. That's good. And, and you said it. Because God already knows. He already knows our heart. Because the spirit in us, he already mm -hmm. knows. So sometimes we don't, that's, that's the thing. Sometimes we are talking too fast. Yes. Yeah. Because we don't even know. So you do. I think how we, we might need to just sit there mid and say, you know, Lord, there's much I want to say, mm -hmm. but I don't even know what to mm -hmm. say. Right. I don't even know how to put it into right. words. Mm -hmm. So Lord, just, you know, yeah. know my heart. Mm -hmm. Because he does. He already knows. He knows what we, want, what we want to say. He knows what we have need of. And so, yes, sometimes I think that's good that we do sit there and let co let's connect with his mm -hmm. spirit. Because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. spirit of God does live in us. Yeah. That's, yeah. A good, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Lord, again, we thank you, God. Just thank you for our time of study on this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, just for um, just speaking with us. And yes, um, thank you for um, just, just helping us to understand your word, to leave us encouraged, God, that um, uh, there's still work for us to do. So knowing, God, that uh, we can walk in your, in your faith, mm -hmm. your faith from this word, God, uh, that we will uh, know that you are able to. Thank you.